Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working in Vroid Studio, which is a 3D character making software, I believe. And before we get into actually making a new kind of model of my OC, I wanted to show you guys my very first attempt of trying to make Masaki. And I made this at the beginning of November, I believe. Now, to be honest, this model isn't really that well made. I had a lot of issues, especially with the hair, but the way how I like to learn is to be really hands-on with something. So I was kind of doing, you know, playing around in the program in conjunction with looking up tutorials or watching people actually make different Vroid models and stuff. And the reason being why I even wanted to do this in the first place was actually because I kept getting recommended a particular video and I decided to click on it and I was like, Maybe it's doable for me too if I could try making one of my OCs in Vroid. So let's go ahead and actually start to make a new model. So from the thumbnail of the video, you probably know that I'm going to be basically making a model of my OC Akemi. And I realized I never really made a full finished kind of like illustration or drawing of him. The one that you're gonna see right now is actually done after I made the model, but let's talk about the model first. So I already went ahead and set the model to be the preset kind of male uh, body or template, I guess. And then after that, you would have saw that there is a bunch of different little toggles and customizations that you can do that's usually listed on the left hand side but for me i wanted to make sure that akemi actually looks like akemi and kind of more towards my own style so i went ahead and went into the kind of like customization for each part so i went ahead and started to do the eyes and i started off with a template that kind of had more of kind of like straight on kind of more I don't know, not deadpan eyes, but they're a little bit more flat rather than round, just to give me a good base before we actually start to customize the rest of Akimi's face. So now you can see that I'm doing the eyebrows. I went ahead and also changed the kind of like colors of his eyebrows to be a little bit more of that navy blue to kind of like more of a skin tone as we move to the edges. After that, I am now adjusting his eye shape because this eye shape that is kind of like the default does not look anything like my style and I feel like I need to adjust it so that it fits a little bit better for one to represent my style and then two to represent how I usually draw Akemi and when I did draw him at the time. So the neat thing about Vroid Studio is that you do not need to have in kind of like an extra program to make your character unique you can definitely just use whatever they have. So you can see that on the right hand side, I kind of have two windows open at the time. So one is like of the model directly and the other one is kind of like this mapping of your, whatever you're trying to customize. So in this case, I'm customizing the face basically like the face, the mouth, the nose, kind of like the eye socket-ish areas. And I'm able to shade and color and either paint or however you want to do it directly onto the character like this. So it's kind of nice because even though you can, and you'll see me do this a little bit later, you can actually import your own textures or your own designs if you do not wish to kind of like paint directly into the software. But I found that if you play around with the settings, so I most of the time, Time we'll use the kind of like the flat circle to do kind of flat fills and then I'll use kind of the more softer circle as an airbrush tool and you can play around with the brush opacity and the pressure sensitivity a little bit so that you can actually get some softer kind of gradations. I kind of recommend, I don't know if this is like because of my my computer or however it works but I find the blur tool to be very laggy and it kind of leaves these weird residue marks um, once you paint over top of it so I kind of don't like using the blur tool at all so I'll just go back and forth between erasing and airbrushing to kind of get a softer gradient if I really need to. So this part usually causes me the most amount of stress and kind of my most amount of time delegated to working on this model. So I think according to my Steam profile, I took about eight and a half hours for the entirety of Akimi's model. Now I did not take in consideration every time I left my desk or my computer at the time, but that's basically whenever I had this program opened and I knew I took a quite long time working on this one. 
But for the hair, it's kind of interesting to work with because you'll see that there's kind of this yellowy mesh. Or I guess it's yellow and green. I guess it's mostly green. This mesh that you place on top of your character, you can adjust the length and how much it's offset from the actual skull of your character. And you can kind of change the direction how the hair flows. So this makes it a lot easier for you to kind of draw in your hair strands. And later on, you'll see that I'm going to adjust the hair texture a little bit later. And I will learn later also that your hair texture can change with the different materials that you can place them so that you don't have to work on each individual hair strand, nor do you have to really kind of adjust everything one at a time. So I started off by kind of blocking in his scalp color for his hair so I decided to start with kind of more of a dark navy blue then after that I decided to work on the back hair so on Vroid Studio there are a few presets that you can use to maybe help guide your hair um, or you want to start off with that before adjusting and I highly recommend you play around with those to see actually how the hair forms on the skull because when I did Masaki's model I did not put every hair strand kind of like directly to a center point or where his hair would part so I had a lot of gaps that I had to refill in or I felt like they were not um, sitting properly. I also decided to do Akemi instead of Maseki for today's video because I spent way too long trying to get Maseki's bangs to look correct just for me to scrap it entirely because there is a funny way that you can play around with the mesh to get kind of more... Mm, I guess like... how would you explain this? Maybe in like anime weird terms like air vents for characters hair where it kind of goes up in almost like an m shape or kind of like a overarching like like if you're lobbing something you start like from the bottom going up and directly down so it's like a nice arch and it made it very difficult for me to work with Masaki's hair because I don't think I took in consideration his part at all so Akemi's turned out a little bit easier so now that you can see this little rectangle on the right side, this is actually the hair texture. So you can actually set your different little groups of hair strands or whatever you want to call them and you can have them set to different materials where you can actually edit the texture. So I was kind of confused when working on this because when I changed one hair texture, everything changed all at once. So I was getting a little bit scared that everything was going to look super choppy and not gonna lie it does look fairly choppy but i'll learn a little bit later on a different model that uh you can you know have a lot of more customization for each individual part of the hair so akemi has kind of like the shaved part of his head and then he has kind of i, I would consider almost like three sets of his hair so you have kind of like the back chunk then you have the sweeping side chunk on the right side of the model, which kind of tucks behind his ear. And then you have his bangs all the way to the left side of his head. So I tried to make sure that I was going to keep those chunks separate. But the one thing I think is kind of neat about Vroid and the good thing about it is that you can always layer up. So for the hair, I wanted to make sure that his hair fit his head like appropriately and I have the shape somewhat correct but later on or I guess I'm doing it right now I made another group on top of everything else and I decided to add more texture add more volume and this way it also just helps to hide a little bit of those other gaps but also just makes the hair look a little bit more full rather than completely flat against his dome of a head I think in the future if I want to dabble more into trying to make 3D models in this program again, I would like to make maybe my other OCs or even my VTuber model just because it'd be something fun to kind of learn more about just because the customizability for like a free program like this. I have this on Steam by the way, but I think there is a possibility to use this on the iPad. I don't know if it's free on there or if it's paid, but this on the computer on Steam is free. So, you know, you can definitely play around with a lot of the customizations. You can make your OCs, you can make other characters, whatever you want. And yeah, once we get to the kind of like the clothing, I'll, uh, I'll kind of like expand a little bit more on the customization of the kind of tools that you have access to. Because I tried my best to not really import any extra textures or anything for 
the majority of the model just because I wanted to see what you could do with the basic tools that you have available or like the brush set that they is kind of already given to you in this program. So one thing I know I for sure cut out is my attempt at playing around with the bone joints or whatever it is that allows you to do physics for the hair. I'm sure there's other physics for the rest of the maybe clothing and stuff as well, but I wanted to tackle that maybe in a either a separate video or a separate session because I wanted to just focus on doing the character and I did not want to focus on having to go back and forth between looking at the I guess like the overall look versus going back to the hair and doing the physics because that was kind of like a pain to keep going back and forth just to check how it looks okay but moving on we are Working with the body now. So I already went ahead and kind of adjusted his body shape to be more appropriate. Then I learned that there was something for accessories. So I decided to go ahead and start to change those for Akemi because he does have glasses that are just like purely round. So I played around with some of the parameters to make sure that the shape of the glasses turned out correctly. After that, I started to shape it even more by playing around with the texture. I even added a little bit of reflection or that glass kind of texture to make the glasses feel a little bit more physical on his face. Then we are moving on to clothing. So clothing was like a whole nother thing i really needed to learn to customize and kind of there's still a lot of things i don't really understand about it but i was really confused when i was making the masaki model so for akemi because he wears a kind of like darker thinner turtleneck underneath kind of like a striped dress shirt i wanted to be able to layer up his clothing so i did a bunch of research and there is a way for you to layer clothing so i decided to start off with kind of like the sweater nope I started off with kind of the, the classic middle schooler Japanese uniform because it kind of has a higher collar so and kind of like a thinner material ish look for it so I decided to adjust that once I was already comfortable having like, kind of like Akemi's turtleneck in place, I decided to fix the rest of the clothing. So I have a long coat for his dress shirt. I went ahead and select some kind of similar pants and shoes for Akemi in terms of the shape and size. Right here, you can see where the arrow is pointing. You can actually change the kind of parameters and switch between drawing so it's a great way to check and kind of adjust things all at once so that you can make the clothes kind of fit the way that you want it to for the most part so you can see that right here i'm drawing with a red brush over top of akemi's clothing before going ahead and chunking in the erasing so we can get the form looking somewhat correct so the sketch kind of allows me to place down a guide first so that I knew how I wanted Akemi's clothing to look before I started to get rid of parts of it and then I would have to redo by painting them back in. But the thing I like about Vroid is that you are given the ability to work in another drawing program by exporting your layer files into whatever program you desire. I'm using Clip Studio Paint today and it just makes it a little bit easier for you to paint in textures alongside like patterning and stuff. So I already went ahead and did the line art which was kind of based off of the sketch that I had in red earlier. And you can import your sketch and the base clothing separately from Vroid Studio so that you can layer it up and then you can actually try your best to make things match and look a little bit more cohesive. You can paint in your folds, you can add in patterning or any other designs as well. I'll show you guys at the very end. I ended up making one more model, but I decided that I would not import anything. So that model will be purely drawn and kind of rendered in Vroid itself. But for the sake of time for Akemi's, I decided that I would import his clothing from Vroid Studio to Clip Studio Paint just to make sure that his clothes looks 100% accurate because the model that I do after Akemi's is a little bit more simple in terms of clothing so it made it a little bit easier for me to work just directly in Vroid rather than having to import just to make small adjustments. So for Akemi's shirt pattern, I went ahead and drew the stripes in on Akemi's model, exported that little template to Clip Studio Paint and then after that I I just painted it in, re-imported it to Vroid Studio so that we could see what it looks like on the model. 
Also, to prevent myself from being a little bit too nitpicky, I kind of fixed up the stripes a little bit more for Akemi's shirt, re-imported it back into v Studio, but anything else that I wanted to kind of fix and match up, I decided that I would just do that directly in v Studio rather than trying to figure it out in Clip Studio Paint. So you can see here that I'm just taking the brush tool and trying my best to match certain lines up again, or if there's some parts that look like they've been clipped, I'm just gonna readjust that on the model itself. So um, after that, I I decided to kind of adjust his pants a little bit. So I adjusted the color just ever so slightly and I went ahead and added a belt for him because that's really the only difference between the current kind of design of the pants and Akami's model. Now, I am not rendering these to like a super high quality for every kind of like part. It's just that because of how it's placed on the model, I decided that I would not put my full effort until I for surely knew that I wanted to, it to look a certain way. So maybe in the future, if I do do other models, I'll put my full effort into making sure things look fully rendered because I think his watch and his belt look super flat and very basic looking. So yeah, I, I did do a little bit more for the shoe, but it's very, very minimal still because even though it's somewhat visible because it's such a small detail, I don't think people would really notice whether or not it's like rendered super high quality or not. Uh, and then the shoes are very simple. So he just kind of has really kind of uh, ankle high kind of black boots with a little belt on either side. After that, I went ahead and tried to figure out how to do a arm accessory. So unfortunately, I was not able to find something that was going to give it a little bit more volume. So I decided to just place something directly on his arm and paint in a watch. So I once again did the sketch in Vroid Studio to kind of get the placement correct. Then I would export that sketch file into Clip Studio Paint, paint in the shape and the colors and put any details that I would like to. And then after that, we can just save it, import that back into Vroid Studio to kind of see whether or not it fits or not. You would have saw that I would have budged it slightly also just to make sure that it to kind of fit nicely on his arm. But last but not least, for his model, he does have a dangling earring. So I went ahead and looked up an earring tutorial for Vroid Studio. Any resources that I've used, I'll link them in the description. So if you like to see what I was referencing, you can check out those videos. But basically you use a hair mesh and kind of flatten it, make a flat strand and basically take advantage of changing the material or the texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase all that hair texture. We're gonna draw on the model for the earring for Akemi. And then after that, we can make small adjustments here. Now, luckily, Vroid Studios layers have the ability to alpha lock, so it makes it a little bit easier to color things within certain parts. But I kind of wish that it had layer clipping because I would like to work on separate layers and not be able to kind of exit out of the little shape that I had already placed. But it's okay, there's a bunch of workarounds that you can work with. But uh, this is kind of the finished model for Akemi. Now, I believe this is before I added in Bloom and the anti-aliasing for him. So I don't know if this is before or after, but uh, during the photo booth, which you can click on the like the little camera icon in Vroid Studio, you can actually play around with like a little bit of the posing and stuff. Also, you can see that whenever he moves, sometimes the kind of clothing kind of clips. So I'm gonna have to do a bit of research into seeing why that happens, or do I have to kind of increase the volume of his clothing so it doesn't happen like that? Because I can see that his turtleneck is kind of clipping into his dress shirt every so often. But I do think that this program is a great way if you would like to do character customization, kind of like a for free program, I think you can do some high quality models models and stuff. And if you have access to another paint program, it kind of just expands that ability to customize it even further. So yeah, this is kind of what uh, Akemi looks like. You can see this is the anti-aliasing or however you pronounce it. And this is where you can add bloom or you can do a little bit of the color adjustments as well. So I, I do like the look of the higher anti-aliasing and then a little bit of the bloom filter on it. It just makes things look a little tad softer. And yeah, I think that's it for Akemi. I'll go ahead and also show you guys the other model that I made for my friend as well in a little bit.
So let's go ahead and click this little middle model from our little selection screen. And we can open up this character that looks kind of little fluffy high schooler. So this is actually my friend's OC, Ricky. And she has let me use him kind of as a test subject in terms of me trying to attempt to make another model. So I also wanted to show you guys what kind of my workflow looks like usually if I'm not filming. So here is the model that I'm working on. Here is the reference tool that I'm using to allow my reference to be floating. And then right here is where I'm actually, is kind of like my work area. So I am using VWord Studio in conjunction with my tablet, but I also adjust things with my mouse and my keyboard. So it's just useful to have them both available. But like I said, if you just have access to a mouse, you can definitely work on making a model absolutely cut to its fullest potential as well. It just probably takes a little bit more time to be uh, able to, I guess, manipulate it in a way that makes a little bit more sense. Also, what what is this? What is this pose? It's like, I'm confused. I don't know if he like swatted the air, he's pushing something out of the way. But yeah, um, in the photo booth, there are a bunch of different animations that you can play around with. I believe you can also just pose the character however you like. You can also change the expressions, change the background, the lighting, all that stuff. But I decided that I would just play around with the animations that it comes with just because I find it kind of neat. Um, but like I said, I did not tackle any of the physics for any of the models. I think I'll tackle that maybe in the future if I really wanted to. But yeah, this is kind of the finished model for my friend's OC. And like I said, I did not import or export um, the textures or anything like that. I did all this directly in Vroid Studio with the tools that they actually have available. So I did the tie, we did the sweater. I can still see stuff clipping a little bit, but if you take your time to go back and forth and use the airbrush tool, you can definitely do a lot for the kind of folds in the clothing. You can add a little bit of texture like the hemming or the ribbing of the sweater as well. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video of me making my model of both Akemi right here and then my friend's OC Ricky. And I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!